Hey, so finally I get to test the Lightpath LED diesel red light therapy panel. And even better, this panel is hot off the production line and is in fact their new and improved second edition of their diesel red light therapy line. Yes, so today I'm reviewing the Lightpath LED XL Shorty Diesel 2.0 red light therapy panel. It's a mouthful, I know, but be sure to stick around because not only will I be talking about the improvements this new Mark II version has over the Mark I, but I'll also be sharing some rather interesting data points on what is happening with the light from this panel. All right, so first let me turn this off. Now, one thing I need to mention here, the control panel is on top. We've seen this before in the previous light path panels and also some other panels. Typically we see control panels on the side. Now this panel is extremely bright. Now when I turned this on, I literally got a shock how bright it was. It was insane. The problem is you have this control panel where you're dialing in the numbers and everything. So your eyes are pretty much bang on level with that, that light. I think it would have been nice having the control panel on the side, but anyway, it is what it is. Okay, so what else do you need to know about this panel? Well, it has 252 LED bulbs. Those bulbs are quite unique as they are multi-chip and I'll explain more soon. It offers pulsing from one hertz through to 10,000 hertz. It's emitting three wavelengths, two in your red, one in the near infrared. It comes with all your regular accessories such as a door mount, a pulley, goggles. Its size is quite unique. It's 34 inches tall and 15 inches across, which is pretty cool. And it also comes with a remote control. How does it compare to the first edition? Let me go through everything. So first up, the display is slightly different. Secondly, it has a few more LEDs. Now these LEDs are quite unique. They're actually triple chip LEDs. It's something I haven't seen before in a panel. I've only seen dual chip LEDs. It means every single LED here is emitting a near infrared wavelength and also a red wavelength. Two thirds of the power is going to the near infrared light and then a third is going to the red light. And despite all of these improvements, the price has stayed the same. All right, let's get out the spectrometer and see exactly what is coming out of those LEDs. Okay, so on screen, you can see the wavelengths emitted by the diesel XL Shorty 2.0. Now, yes, there are three peaks and we expected that as there are three marketed wavelengths. But what's interesting is the real world wavelengths are actually a little bit different to what's marketed. So let's go through this. Now, light path LED say you're getting 620 and 670 nanometers in the red range. I'm guessing they've chosen these wavelengths as they are the best wavelengths to optimize the cytochrome C oxidized absorption uptake. What we see though is a peak here at 632. Now remember the first wavelength should have been 620 which is all the way down here. So yes you are getting some 620 but you're getting more than double the amount of 630. Not not like end of the world stuff but it is interesting. It's more interesting because the red is also different. They market it as a 670 peak. I'm seeing a 659. Let's call it a 660. 6 70 is actually all the way down here. So you're almost getting, or you pretty much are, you're getting probably two or three times the amount of 660. Now 660 is fine, there's no issues with this. Uh, it's just, yeah, I mean, the numbers that I'm seeing are slightly different to what's in the box. Of course, you're still getting all this light in between the 630 and 670. So you're getting some 640s, some 650s, right up to 660, and yes, you are still getting the 670 down here. It's one of the benefits of having multiple red light LEDs because you do get all the light in between as well, rather than just one single peak. So you are getting a heap of light here. I don't want this to be a criticism. The wavelengths are good. They're just different uh, to what's marketed on the site. Okay, so as for the near infrared, it's marketed as a peak of 810. I was seeing about 803, here we got an 806. So that's not too bad, uh, 810 is there, so you're still getting a heap 810. What's interesting, if you've read my article on 810 or the interview I had with Bart on 810, it's actually 805 to 810 anyway. In fact, a lot of the research is around 804, 805, and that's what the guys from Kineon are using in their uh, Move Plus Pro, they're using about an 805. So this is all good, it's just slightly different. So yeah, and we're still seeing a heap of light coming from say 790 through to about 
815. So it is optimized for that mitochondrial absorption, which is really, really good. I do like all of this near infrared as well. So good stuff there. Okay, so what about the power figures? Well, I had a peak irradiance of 62 milliwatts over centimeter squared. This is a decent number. However, it's a lot lower than some of the new panels I've been testing from say Rojo Therapy or Moto Red Light, which were closer to 100 milliwatts over centimeter squared. What's interesting though, is the average power across nine points was 56 milliwatts over centimeter squared. Now this is 90% of the peak. Typically with the panel, we see anything from say 70 to 85%. You typically see a concentration of light in the middle and then towards the side, it drops off quite a lot in some cases. To see such a good blend across the panel means you're getting a nice uniform coverage of red light. And plus remember this panel does measure 15 inches across. So you are getting good coverage area. The total wattage output was 137 watts, which is surprisingly high given the irradiance figures we just saw. I think part of the reason the total wattage figure is so high relative to the number of LEDs is because of the shape. It's a lot more square than the typical narrow panels we often see. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, if you're looking for surface level treatments, you only really need a three to five minute session time. For deeper tissue treatments, such as joint or muscle health, you need around a 10 to 15 minute session for optimal results. And if you wanna see more like this, hit subscribe. I try and do one red light therapy review a week. So by hitting subscribe, you're gonna be the first to find out about it. What about EMF and sound levels? Well, the sound is really good and it had a reading of 41 decibels. This XL Shorty at 41, you're not gonna have any issues with sound. Unfortunately, on the EMF side, there was a bit of a reading in the low frequency range. I saw a 0.22 micro Tesla reading at six inches. It puts it in the low orange category. It's not alarming, but it's not ideal either. Okay, so now for price, how much is this new second edition panel? Well, it retails for 1,624 US dollars. Discount code Alex will save you a few dollars and bring this price down to $1,543. Shipping in America is free. Unfortunately, at the time of shipping, I'm not too sure around the shipping status for international customers. I'm told it will be available soon. So you'll have to just go over to the website and check it out or send them an email. What about stands? Well, you can get a floor boot stand for $164 or a horizontal stand for $224. Finally, we have a five-year warranty on this panel, which is amazing. And there's also a 30-day returns period, which does include a 20% restocking fee. Okay, so what do I like about this? Well, there's actually quite a few things. I like the 15 inch size. After my recent video where I tested what was happening with the light across the panel, I decided that yeah, really 12 inches is the minimum width you want when you get in the panel. To see this panel go out to 15 inches is a massive plus. Next, I love the amount of 810 nanometer light we're seeing in this. Well, 805 as we saw before. It's really, really neat. This year I've been geeking out on these other near infrared wavelengths and yeah, the 805 to 810 stuff really did impress me. So I've actually been looking into panels now that have this wavelength. There are a few out there and I'll share some of these later in the video, but to have a panel that is literally emitting 810 nanometers in every single bulb and has two thirds of the light going to this wavelength, it is pretty extraordinary. Free shipping is great. The five-year warranty is great. There's also a really good support and community network with this company. So if you're buying a panel from Lightpath LED, you'll get an opportunity to speak with the founder himself. There's also regular group calls and there's an active Facebook community as well. I like the fact that you can play around with pulsing if you're into that. And I do like the fact that you've got those triple LED chips. That's probably why we're getting such an even spread of light across this panel. Okay, so what do I not like about it? Well, unfortunately, there's a few things to touch on here as well. First up, we have the potential issues with international buyers. You may be sitting on the sidelines for a while before you can get the ship to your non-American address. Secondly, there is a little bit of EMF there. It's not a concerningly high amount, but some people will be put off by that. Next, I did find this setup a little bit annoying. Firstly, you have to screw the rubber feet on in the back. That was maybe five, 10 minutes, no biggie. And secondly, I thought for a while there that I had a dodgy panel. I had it all turned on, the screen lit up, but no matter what I pressed, even following the manuals, I couldn't get it to run. Turns out there's a switch on the back that is said to follow or lead. That's for the modular capability. If you get multiple panels, you can connect them all together and control them from one uh, panel, which is great. However, I had to flick that switch and then all of a sudden it started running. 
I don't know why it was set to follow instead of lead, but yeah, like I said, it caused me a few moments of anxiety thinking, oh, I've got it done. Next, we have that 30 day returns policy with the 20% restocking fee. Those numbers aren't great. A lot of other companies are doing better than that, maybe 60 or 90 day return policies, and a lot have a much lower restocking fee. Next, we have the control panels. Yes, this is a massive improvement on the older generation light path LED pulse panel. That thing drove me nuts. This has nice tactile buttons. The screen is quite big and clear to see. However, it's still far from perfect, especially when we compare it to the Biomax's touchscreen control panel or the mono red light or infrared LCD screens. It's still far from great and you're still gonna need to have the manual in front of you when you're working this out, especially for the first few times. It's not a deal breaker, but it could be better. Then we have the wavelength discrepancy. It's not a major, you're still getting really good quality therapeutic light, but it isn't a great look when the company's saying you're getting these three wavelengths, but in reality, you're getting slightly different wavelengths. It does make you wonder, hey, look, have they actually tested this panel? Do they know what's going on? Again, though, it's not like these are 50 nanometer differences. Finally, perhaps the biggest con is the price. It is on the steeper side. However, you are getting quite a unique panel here and some will be happy to pay the premium. Overall then, what do I think? Well, I do like it and I do like that it's different, but it's not just different from a marketing hype point of view. This is different because Scott at Lightpath LED has looked into the science around red light therapy, has looked at what the ideal wavelengths are, and he's also looked at what people want in a red light therapy panel. Or maybe he's just watched a lot of my reviews, I'm not too sure. But we see a wavelength spectrum that is optimized for mitochondrial health. We see a great coverage of light, and we see a panel that is nice and white, something I really do value now. So is this for you? Well, if you're an 18 nanometer purist, then yeah, you're gonna love this. We have two thirds of the power going to 18 nanometers. It hasn't been done before in a red light therapy panel. And that point alone is gonna be a massive draw card for a lot of people. Secondly, if you're someone who likes to be slightly different and against the grain, then yeah, you're gonna be attracted to this. I mean, just look at it, it's gray. Most panels are white or black or maybe red. Secondly, the size, it's unique, 15 inches across. I haven't seen it before. But thirdly, it doesn't even have 850 nanometer near infrared light. I can't think of a panel that doesn't have that wavelength. Then you're going to become part of the Lightpath LED support community, which like I've said earlier, is quite active and quite valuable. But before you rush out and buy it, be sure to look at all options. Now, if the 18 nanometer near infrared light is a big draw card, there are other panels out there that are using this wavelength. The Platinum LED Biomax has some 18 in it, but only a few percent. Mito Red Light's new Mito Adapt panel has 25% of the power going to 810 which is pretty cool, but it's still a lot less than the 66% in this panel. But both of these panels are a lot cheaper than the XL Shorty. Alternatively, you can check out, say, the Infrared Flex. This has a lot of things going for it, including the pulsing, multi-wavelengths, modular capability, good price. However, with the nine inch width, and seeing what I discovered in a recent video where I looked at light coverage, I really think you're better off trying to get a panel that is wider. Now, I know I've touched on light coverage quite a bit. The video I'm referring to is this one. I highly recommend checking it out. It explains why I'm a big fan of these wider panels now, whether it's a 12 inch Biomax 900 or a 15 inch light path LED. Again, you can check it out by clicking here. Otherwise, leave any questions below. Cheers.